with Federico when it comes to Kleros and what they're working on, which I personally think is amazing, but uh, <laughs> he'll tell you more about. Thank you, Joe. Um, so there's a question we <laughs> he didn't ask. Um, who thinks that this blockchain thing is fundamentally a very big scam? So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because people think that because they have seen lots of ICOs, like raising millions and millions and delivering very little in terms of product, right? And so people see the token sales, but they don't see what people are building with that. <laughs> so I'm going to show you one specific application of blockchain in particular into the legal industry. That's what I'm working on. And it's called Kleros. So, Imagine Alice, an entrepreneur from France, and she hires Bob, a developer from Guatemala. He does website design uh, for a contract, and he delivers the product, right? And then she's not happy uh, because she says that what he did uh, is not what she expected, so there's a dispute there. And she's not going to Guatemala to find a lawyer and go to court like for a $500 dispute, right? It doesn't make any, any sense. Now, imagine if, instead of paying him directly, she had sent the payment into a smart contract that asks, uh, acts as an escrow, and they both agree that if there is a dispute on this um, contract, it's going to be solved by Kleros, that is going to be the, an arbitrator, right? So everything uh, is agreed before the dispute happens. So the dispute happens, and then um, the dispute goes to Kleros, and Kleros is going to select, in an automatic way, a number of experts who are going to be like jurors for this dispute. And these guys are going to analyze the contract between the parties. They're going to see the evidence. And they're going to vote, right? So they are all experts in websites from all over the world. And they vote that Alice wins. So the contract that held the funds in a scroll is going to send the funds back to her, right? And then she can recover the money that she had put there without going to court, right? So a very big question is how are these jurors or arbitrators selected? And Kleros is called, so it's, it means randomness in, in Greek, because it's based on how the ancient uh, courts worked in, in Greece, right? So imagine this woman, she's in Japan, and she's a designer, and she uh, works during the day in an agency, and during the evening she wants to make some extra money by doing arbitration about website disputes. So to become an arbitrator, she has to get this token. It's a digital cryptocurrency that's called Pinakion. It's based on the name that um, the ID had in the ancient Greek courts. So that's how uh, jurors were selected in trials in ancient Greece. And remember, they had this big like crowd trials of these big, um, big uh, rooms where they had um, like 50 jurors. And the whole system was based on the fact are, that all the citizens should be allowed to uh, judge. Of course, all citizens who are not female or slaves. Uh, so this woman has to put this token, this Pinakion token, into a court. Uh, in this case, she's going to deposit this into the freelancing court, because Clarence can be used for lots of use cases. But she's going to put it into the freelancing court, because it's a freelancing dispute about websites. And many more people are going to put this token there. And this gives them the right to be drawn as jurors for, arbitra for arbitration, right? And so it's like a random selection machine. So of all these guys who deposit the token, so only some of them are, are drawn. Uh, and they get the right to be jurors on the case and to collect arbitration fee for their work. So. The big question is, how do you make these guys who are all over the world um, be, be honest in the arbitration? What's the big risk here? That they just pick, see the contract, and they see the evidence, and they just vote like randomly A, B, B, A, without even looking at the evidence. So that's a big risk here. Um, to solve this, Kleros uses game theory. So you may know this book. It's uh, by Thomas Schelling, Nobel Prize in Economics, 2005. And he wrote, you know, remember the prisoner's dilemma where you have two guys in different rooms and they have to decide what to say depending on what the other says, they go free or they stay in jail? 
So this is th that kind of um, this, this type of exercise that Schelling re research on, and this book is about that type. And here he um, makes this example, right? Each one of you pick uh, one of the squares, and if you pick the same that I picked, we both get twenty dollars. Have you picked one? Yeah. A1, who picked A1? No one. A6? I, I don't see anything that you're saying, but... <laughs> 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 but yeah, so people pick A6 because it seems special, right? All of them would be perfectly fine. But since you thought I would pick A6 because it's special, and I thought you would pick that one because you thought I would pick that one, then we coordinate to pick the same one, and we both win. Another example, pick one number, and I will pick, and we have to pick the same, and we both win. So anyone picked 1,000? Right. <laughs> so see that when we are put into this type of um, games, in this type of scenario for decisions, we tend to coordinate in some ways, right? Um, and this point that we chose independently um, from each other, because we couldn't communicate in the process, it's called the shelling point. So it's the place where different people coordinate based on this decision scenario where they have to choose in an uh, independent way. So if we apply the game theory logic of the shelling point to arbitration, and we have every, all, all the jurors analyze um, the same piece of evidence, the same website, the same contract, and they are all experts in uh, website development, and we uh, reward those who vote um, as the others, as we did before, so we can expect that they will, each of them, vote for the true answer for this uh, problem. Understand the logic behind this? Um, and so, th those who vote like the majority are going to be rewarded. Those who vote like the different from the majority we can expect that they didn't do their job properly, that maybe they just voted randomly to collect money fast, and so they are going to be penalized by losing the token that they had deposited in the court, right? So, this is how Cleros tries to align the economic incentives for, of jurors for voting the truth. And um, so, on average, people trying to game the system by like, not taking a look at the evidence, they're going to, maybe they're, once they're going to vote like the majority and win. But if they keep playing this game, just voting randomly, in the long run, they're going to lose more money than they make, and then they are going to exit the system. And the arbitrators that do a fine work like analyzing the evidence and being experts in the, in the type of dispute, so they will make money and they will stay there. So the system has like a self-protecting way of keeping the honest people inside the arbitration and keeping out the, the liars and the people who want to abuse it. So all this explanation that I'm guessing that it's not very common in law <laughs> uh, conferences, all this game theory, so this is called, it's, it's, it's part of a new field that's called crypto economics. It's about how you generate incentives, the right incentives, to create the right behavior in um, like distributed systems, right? This is a distributed system of jurors that for decentralized justice, as Bitcoin is a decentralized system of incentives for a number of computers to agree on a single ledger, right? So you are going to hear a lot more of this crypto economic world in the time to come because uh, it's going to start uh, affecting different industries, uh, in this case law, but many others as, as well. Um, use cases of Cleros, there are tons of them, mostly in the small claim uh, like use cases. For example, e-commerce companies, they have lots of disputes and they can use Cleros for arbitration cheaper and faster than what exists now. Parking violations, so imagine the government, so they take a picture of a car parked in the wrong place, and this goes to a tribunal of citizens, and they decide if the car was indeed parked in the wrong place or not, and that then applies a fine to the, to the uh, driver. Lots of 
small uh, insurance claims about car crashes, who has to pay, who, who was at fault here, insurance company A or insurance company B, so this can be solved cheaper and faster with Cleros. And then lots of small claims, like user against credit card company, user against utility company or whatever uh, other like small claim uh, in this area. And then there are tons of other use cases that can pop up in time. So imagine the VAR, right? The VAR is not very different from this. Like you have uh, some video that everyone can see, and now you have a referee that watches this and says it's penalty or not. Why not crowdsource the decision in the crowd, <laughs> right? I guess it would make a better yeah, job. Like, so you can't bribe like 5,000 5, people, right? And you know, it's not maybe the lowest hanging fruit, but <laughs> it's something that is within the possibilities in, in the midterm, I think. So basically, Cleros is a protocol, a network of jurors and of incentives. And then on top of Cleros, is, there's going to be a lot of companies being built. Like you have, now you have the Bitcoin protocol, and on top of that, you have like wallets like Coinbase or others. So imagine Cleros being a protocol, and on top of that, someone will build a company for travel um, disputes, another for e-gaming disputes, insurance, and whatever. And they all use Cleros as protocol for having the incentive for, for jurors. Well, as you know, we are incubated by Thomson Reuters, and we are doing this job of analyzing use cases. And I am really looking forward to hearing from you. Like, I'm going to be around all day, so if you think you have cases for this, because we don't even know which are the use cases for Claros. We know some of them, but there are tons, right? So um, we are doing, Thomson Reuters, this very like, thorough um, job of analyzing the, all the areas where Claros can bring solutions for this good resolution. Um, and then I think that's it. So thank you. Honestly, I think it's, it's an amazing concept. Uh